Guys, uh, so uh, today uh, I'll be discussing. Uh, it's, it's a short video discussing about uh, the examinations. The exam is coming nearby. What is the examination pattern and how to crack that pattern? So it's a short video on uh, what areas you should focus on. Uh, what is the exam pattern and uh, uh, what is the, like which which college you will get after clearing which exam? Uh, what is fellowship entrance test? What is fellowship of national boards? Then uh, what uh, what they what what comes in INISs and what comes in NITSs. So first we'll be discussing uh, about for a fellowship entrance test. So recently the fellowship of national boards has come up recently for Head and Neck Oak. It's a it's a good fellowship program that has uh, that is under uh, NBE. So the fellowship is accredited by National Board of Examination. So uh, the exam pattern here is that there are forty questions that comes from general surgery and ENT. And 60 questions will come from core head and neck. So, uh, so the fellowship of national board uh, uh, head and neck oncology, uh, you get a seat in uh, high running, high volume private centers like in Delhi. There are four places, four or five places where the FNB program is going on, like in Vedanta, BL Kapoor, Max, then Max Vaishali. Uh, there's an FNB program going on. So the exam pattern is basically 40 questions from ENT and general surgery, and 60 percent from 60 uh, percent questions from head and neck. And uh, it is plus four uh, for correct response and uh, negative marking that is minus one for a neg uh, for a negative response and they are total uh, a total hundred questions in FNB. So the exam uh, the FNB can be your backup plan if uh, if few students who cannot unfortunately crack the NEET SS or the INISS. So it can be a backup plan for pe uh, for people who want to pursue in head neck. But your primary goal should be INISS and NEET SS. So FNBs are conducted in uh, FNB program is conducted in private hospitals and there is good exposure to middle class patients where uh, big hospitals uh, in government setups we usually cater to the poor uh, population but in uh, private setups where middle class or rich or affluent class comes so you get to treat such patients so that is the ultimate goal ultimately we are all going to work most of us are going to work in private hospitals so fellowship is in such a way uh, can be good and it can also be a backup plan if you cannot uh, uh, rack your NEET SS or INSS. So next, now the next is NEET SS. NEET SS has maximum number of MCH seats. So it's an important uh, exam. So how to crack NEET SS? Now you should understand the exam pattern. The exam pattern consists, this is a, a screenshot from the prospectus of NEET SS. The exam pattern consists of around 150 questions. And all these questions are based on ENT plus general surgery plus head and neck as a subspeciality of ENT. So your paper will be 150 questions will will revolve around these these three. Now the problem is that ENT everyone will be knowing because they are uh, PG. Most of them are uh, PGs who have just given their MS exam. So this doesn't this is not a problem but the problem comes how to read general surgery and how to read head and neck. So similar uh, similarly like uh, FNB the NEET SS uh, also has uh, um, uh, for negative marking minus one for a negative response and plus four for a correct, so correct response. But the problem here is that there are 150 questions and the exam is uh, two and a half hours, whereas FNB has 100 questions. And FNB has a proper 60% weightage of head neck, but in uh, NEET, the weightage is not decided. They are telling that it will be a broad specialty that is PG exit, PG level exit uh, syllabus will be there. So it will include ENT and general surgery, but head and neck also comes in NEET SS. Now coming to INISS, so now INISS is purely based on head and neck. There will be core questions on advanced topics on head and neck. So it will completely, uh, there will be all high level advanced questions will come from head and neck. So it's a, it's, it's also a good exam. Uh, the benefits are that the salary will be good. It will be a central scale above 1 lakh will be your salary. There will be no bond. There's a brand value for these institutes and you can be easily absorbed in the system if you want to go in government setups. Once who clears their MCH from these uh, institutes, they get easily absorbed into the system. Now the pattern is there. It, it's, it, has, it is in two stages. It, uh, first stage is of 80 marks. Second stage is of 20 marks. Stage one is theory exam and stage two is a YY exam. Uh, now in theory exam, you need to crack a minimum 50% you need to sit for the YY exam. So, so it's important that you should aim for you should at least qualify the exam if you don't qualify the exam you cannot sit for the viva exam and here the negative marking is one third there is plus one for uh, for a correct question and minus one three uh, one third for the wrong question so you need to score minimum 40 in this exam to sit for the uh, to sit for the stage two of the viva exam 
Now, what what should be your strategy to prepare for these exams? So obviously, everyone will tell you that your concept should be good. Your you should know the facts. You should, especially in head neck oncology, you should know the recent AGCC staging of eighth edition, then all the recent updates and all the important tables of Stellan Meran and Scott Brown. So all these things are we have incorporated in our videos. So everything is available in the videos. But apart from videos, you should all also focus on the question bank. A video is about theory. It's a it's a compiled theory. <laughs> Everything has been compiled together. All the important tables and charts have been compiled together in the videos. So it's it's like a compilation of the extreme past theory which is available into those videos. <laughs> Sorry. But but why question bank becomes important that I'll tell you in the coming slides. So, uh, so this is the strategy to clear exam. Now, what comes now important, one of the biggest headache for us is that they are also asking general surgery. Why? Because general surgery is also feeding broad specialty for your entrance. So general surgery, it's a headache for us because we are not in touch with general surgery for the last three, three years. So some important topics that will, that they will definitely ask will be based on shock, wound healing, fluid and electrolyte, burns, trauma, transplant, basics of neuro and vascular surgery. So all these things you have to read. But it's, if there's no time, just go to the question bank. I did like that. I I searched all the question banks that were available for general surgery and except genital unity tract or core abdominal systems, I covered all the general surgery questions except GUT and breast. I did all the general surgery questions and could crack the general surgery part of the exam. So basically general surgery, you need to just do the question banks or if possible, if you have time, go through, go through the videos. Right. Now, ENT, ENT, the thing is that it will be PG exit level. All of you have given your MS or DNB ENT. So, you will be well thorough with ENT. So, it's easy to make ENT questions. The problem comes in head neck because we are not very much exposed to head neck in our MS days. So, it becomes tricky and you need to see and refer where to read head neck from. So, we have a comp compilation of all uh, head neck uh, theory in, sing in some... Uh, we have around 25 hours of 25 to 30 hours of content of head and neck which you can see maybe you can finish it but you can see it and finish it in four to five days and make notes and then you can just keep revising them and we also have question bank we also have ent videos if some if some of you think that you are weak in ent you can go through through, through those videos also so important here is that we have head and neck con uh, content available based on the repeat questions and also important tables of Scott Brown and Stelman are all available in those videos. But you can read any amount of hours, you can read any amount of theory, you can see any number of videos, but the biggest blunder that happens in exam is if you do a repeat question wrong. So in my in my first attempt, uh, my mistake was I did not do question back. So I could not crack that exam in my first attempt. But in the second attempt, I went through the, all the question banks available. Uh, and I, I'm telling you that 60%, 60 percent, 60 to 70 percent of the exam is based on repeat questions. So you have, you should do repeat questions, and we have in search test we have a vast question bank available, and you can go through that. So search test will give you a good platform to go through the videos that is the theory and the question bank, which can help you target the exam. So as I told, 60 percent of the exam is repeat and basic. So repeat question you should not miss. Do the question banks. 30 percent is conceptual and new, which you can crack from the videos. And 10% are trick questions or very difficult uh, database questions, which uh, which will depend on your luck. Okay. Thank you. So all the best for your exams. Thank you. Mm -hmm.